Welcome to the Going Pro series, where a series where I'm going to break down how to make the transition from being a home brewer to the commercial side, um, to working in the craft beer industry. This is going to be episode one. Uh, last episode was just a quick introduction to the series. This is the first sort of meat and potatoes of, of the situation. What we're going to do in today's episode is define our terms. What are the positions at a craft brewery? What do they look like? What do I do? Um, at, at my job uh, and what sort of situation do I walk into and it, it'll just it'll just make it easier for you to decipher when you're looking at job options and openings what they're actually talking about and what tasks and stuff you can expect from that particular position. Let me know in the comments what you guys are drinking. This is a stout, oatmeal stout. The craft brewery, right, it's broken into three major areas. You have the brew house, then you have the cellar, and then you have packaging. And depending on the size of the brewery and what the business model is, this is going to vary as far as um, it could all sort of be like in one room even. It could be in multiple different rooms. It could be in different buildings. Um, they could have different emphasis. The The cellar and the brew house are going to be um, – are gonna be like vitally important regardless of scale. The packaging side could be very simple. If you're if you're in part of the sort of like new model of microbreweries and you're selling beer as a business um, just on premises out of a tap room or a tasting room, your packaging is basically just gonna be kegs. And maybe you have maybe you have like a really rudimentary canning line and you do like one or two beer um, beers on, on the on the line or something like that, and so you don't have that many cans. But for the vast majority, it's just kegging equipment. Um, at at the brewery that I work at, we're probably on the bigger side of craft breweries, um, and 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 we we can and distribute like a large portion of our beers. So the packaging side is pretty extensive. Um, but that's just the nature of the fact that the business has been around for a long time and that was the way that things were done back then. And so sort of grandfathered into a lot of things um, and have a lot of really good distribution chains in that regard. But anyway, it's just one of those, not to get too far into the weeds, it's just one of those um, one of those things to think about is that there are three main areas, but they could have different emphasis depending on the business model and the size of the brewery. Um, for the most part, the the brewery is going to be brewers, head brewers, lab uh, lab assistants might be in there a little bit, but those guys their their main job is is to produce the unfermented beer. So they're going to be dealing with all the recipe formulations and making sure the recipes are dialed in. They're going to be dealing with all the cleaning and maintenance of all the um, boil kettles and whirlpool vessels and mash tuns and whatever they've got heat exchangers. Um, all of that is going to be under the purview of the brewer and his assistants or compatriots, depending on how big the, again, depending on the situation and how big the brewery is, it could be one guy who's doing that and a bunch of other stuff. It could be multiple people that are just worried about the happenings of the brew house. Um, at, um, at our, at, at the brewery that I work at, we have a head brewer, um, and, and he's, he's a one man band up there. Um, but he does a lot. Uh, as sort of everybody, um, everybody does. Every, there were for the size, we don't have that many staff members, um, which is cool because everybody has a lot of responsibility and a lot of um, autonomy over their domain, so to speak. So um, our our head brewer is running the show in the brew house, and then what? Then where sort of the head brewer's domain or the or the brewery assistant or the shift brewer or whatever, where their domain sort of ends. And where the sellerman and the sellerman's assistant and stuff like that, where that starts is is the seller. And so the seller is really where beer goes from wort to beer. And that's where all the yeast pitching and yeast management happens. That's where the dry hopping happens. That's where all the fermentation monitoring happens and the quality control and the carbonation and the, and the filtration and centrifuging and all that kind of stuff. That's my domain. So at... At the brewery that I work at, I'm the I'm one of the cellarmen, um, 
I was sort of funky because I was hired as an assistant, but we really needed somebody to work in the cellar. And so I've taken on a lot of a lot of responsibility really quickly. And I'm the I'm really the main guy that's working down there. But the biggest thing is is monitoring fermentation of all of the beers that are being fermented at the same time and keeping track of gravities, taking gravity readings every single day, taking pH readings, tasting the, the beers throughout fermentation, making sure that there's no infections or nothing's weird or funky. Oh, another thing to, to, to consider too about the cellaring process is it's really good for your understand, understanding and developing your palate, I think, because, because you're tasting beers every single day through all processes of fermentation, all the different styles that are being made from wheat beers to oat stouts to IPAs, New England IPAs, gluten-free saisons, um, porters, all sort of blueberry wheat beers, all sorts of weird stuff. Um, you you really get to develop your palate as to like what beers taste like when they're unfermented and what those beers are going to taste like when they're fermented and what it, and if the beer is tasting a certain way, is it on track or is it going in a weird direction? And those kinds of things are are I've found are super applicable to the homebrew side because you know you're tasting your unfermented beer before you throw it into your five gallon bucket or your three gallon fermenter in my case and you have an idea of what your recipe is going to taste like. But now that I have just gotten so many reps on certain styles, you get a really good idea of like, oh, this bitterness level is going to really sort of equal this kind of a beer or this kind of malt backbone is going to equal this sort of character or this kind of roast is going to equal this sort of final product. Um, so that's a really interesting sort of overlap. But anyway, there's a, there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot going on. And it's an interesting position because you're in communication, tight communication with the guys on both sides of you, as in you're in tight communication with the brewer because he's, he's brewing his beers and then sending them into the cellar. Um, and then you're in tight communication with the guys on the packaging side because they're trying to coordinate or which beers are finishing out and when they're going to be finished and when they can be packaging them um, and the CO2 levels and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, you really get a, a sense of both sides of the, all sides of the process being sort of square in the middle. So that's a really interesting position um, and something to consider for sure if, as you're going on your job search. Um, and again, it really depends on the size because the brewer and the cellarman could basically be the same person. It, it could, there could be a lot of blending as you get smaller, like smaller in size. I find that like, it seems like a lot of the positions start to blend. So you're wearing a lot of hats, um, as an employee, which is, which is cool. Um, and we we have a sort of a unique situation because we don't have a lot of people working at the brewery right now. Um, but it's a pretty large brewery. So even though it does sort of is sort of built to have separate like pretty distinct departments we're doing a lot of overlap stuff because um because there's not a lot of people so you end up learning a lot all right let me take let me take a sip here okay moving on the third and final piece of the puzzle is the packaging side and again depends on the size of the brewery this could be a really small thing that the set sort of under the cellarman's purview um, it could be a whole department in and of itself with multiple employees um, it could it could be it could like you know the, the brewer could have could be could be packaging as well it, ju it just depends on on the size and, and the situation um, but w like the packaging department like I said we have a really big canning line it does I think um, I think like 90 cans a minute or something like that so pretty pretty intense um and we can a lot of beer the canning line they're worried about transferring the finished carbonated filtered centrifuge whatever you want to call it beer from the bright tanks or the fermenters or whatnot into onto their side where it's getting packaged into kegs and cans and so those guys they're dealing with the cleaning and maintenance of all that equipment. They're dealing with the serious quality control of the final product. What are the cans? What are the dissolved oxygen levels in the cans? What are the cans tasting like? Um, what are the carbonation? What's the carbonation level like? That's that's really cool because you get to really be at like the the tip of the spear, so to speak, where you're really dialed in with what the finished product, what that consumer facing product is going to be like. Something to consider as well. And really like an overarching theme that I'm going to keep hammering home with this series is that the brewing industry, like a lot of industries, is very much a earn your keep kind of a thing where you you need to come in at the ground level in an entry level position, whatever that may be, cellarman, packaging line, 
brewery assistant, whatever it is, whatever that lower rung of the ladder is. And you need to prove your worth as a as an employee, as somebody who works hard, as somebody who has the passion and capacity to learn day in and day out, even though stuff goes wrong. It's really similar to farming in that regard. Stuff goes wrong. You got to fix things. Things aren't going right. You work some long shifts, but you end up getting it done at the end of the day. And once you build that trust in whatever industry you're in, whatever business you're in, that's when you start getting more and more responsibility. You're, you start to be able to like dabble in areas maybe you want to move to. Like I helped mash in the other day and that was cool. I haven't been on that side of things a lot. Um, COVID's made sort of some protocols and stuff a little bit weird at work, but um, I plan on doing a little bit more floating um, it, if I get the opportunity uh, just to build the skill set all the way around. Um, so anyway, I think that's that's a pretty good overview of um, of, of how things are, are operating on a, on a commercial side. Again, big takeaways. It really is size dependent and brew dependent on how distinct these categories are or these areas are, but you basically have your brew house, your cellar, and your packaging. Brew house creates the unfermented beer, cellar turns that on, the cellar turns that unfermented beer into finished beer, and the packaging takes that giant volume of finished beer and breaks it down into whatever um, packaging vessels that are being, it's the beers being served out of. Um, and this is the production side. Obviously there's, you know, uh, production managers or CEOs or marketing guys or coordinating what beers need to be brewed when, um, that kind of a thing. So there's, there's lots of other positions. I'm just focusing on the production side of it because that's what interests me at, at this stage. I think that's gonna wrap it up. I got um, some beer to drink. I'll see you guys on the next episode where we are going to discuss what to expect, what to expect physically, what to expect mentally, what it's like for that first couple days, couple weeks, couple months, um, and and what are some skills that are really transferable as a home brewer into the commercial side, what are some skills that just don't exist on the homebrew side that you really have to pay attention to and, and dial in. Um, and just sort of general philosophies of what day to day is what day to day operations are like, um, and what my day is like. So, with that, thanks for watching. Um, hope to see you guys in the next one. And as always, roast.